Hey folks, uh, this lesson is understanding percents. So let's go ahead and get started here. So there's our common core strand. So we're going to find percent of a quantity. That's what this common core is. So for example, 30% uh, of a quantity means 31 hundredths times that quantity. So we'll do the deal with more of that in lessons 8, 2, and 8, 3. So here we're just finding what percents and fractions are equivalent to each other. So our question here is, how can we write our ratio as a percent? Okay, and don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. All right, so a percent, you guys, is just a ratio that compares any number to 100. So the symbol, this is our symbol for percent right here. So that's what we're going to use for percent. So for example, 17%, <clears throat> it just compares 17 to 100. So 17 hundredths right here, or 17 to 100, or 17 hundredths. We'll mostly use this piece right here. Excuse me. <clears throat> So here are the free throw ratios of three basketball players. So player one uh, gets uh, 17 over 25. Player two is 33 over 50. And this, this person is 14 over 20. So we're going to write each ratio as a number compared to 100 and then shade the grids to represent the free throw. So the grids are on the next slides here, you guys. So we, it's, it's asking us to rewrite the ratios compared to 100. So here, 25 goes into 100 four times. So we multiply this by 4. So multiply 17 times 4, and that's going to give us 68 right there. Okay, 17 times 2 is 34. So double that. That'll give us 68. Okay, here, this is uh, 50 goes into 100 two times. So multiply 33 times 2. That gives us 66. And then 20 times 5 equals 100, so 14 times 5 equals 70 right there. All right, let's slide that up. Here's the grids right now. Now we're going to um, uh, shade. So here's a 100 squares for each one right here. So to represent um, 17 out of 25, which is the same as 68 out of 100, we're going to shade 68 of these. So I'll shade this whole row, the second one. So there's 20, 40, I'm sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then we're going to shade 8 of these right here, okay? All right, so this one we're going to shade 2 less because this is 66, all right? And then this one is 70, so we're going to shade all 7 rows right there. All right, let's answer some questions here. So which player has the greatest free throw? Now, it's kind of harder to see when they first gave us 17 out of 25 and 33 out of 50 and 14 out of 20. But when we changed them all to 100s, then we can see that player 3 has more of the squares shaded. So player 3 had a better better uh, free throw ratio. So how is this, how does the grid, um, how is this shown on the grid? Well, it just has most of the squares shaded out of all three of those guys. Uh, use percent to describe each player's free throw, then write from least to greatest. Okay, so percent is, is per 100, so this is 68% because it's per 100. 17 out of 25 is the same as 68 out of 100, so this is 68%. This is 66%, this is 70%. Now it says write from least to greatest, so we'll do this one first. This one second, this one third. Don't forget your percent signs, you guys, because it said use percents to describe. So if you just wrote 66, uh, you need to write the percent because we're talking about percents on here. So, so I'm sure your teacher is going to uh, request that. So how do we uh, determine uh, how many squares to shade on each grid? Okay, well, that's easy. So write, uh, just make sure the, the ratios are equivalent ratios with 100 in the denominator. And then the numerator just tells us how many squares to shade out of 100 right there, okay? All right, so here we go. We can use a percent bar uh, to model a ratio expressed as a fraction and to find equivalent percents. So we're going to use a percent bar to find an equivalent percent of one-fourth. Okay, so let's draw a model to represent 100 uh, divided into fourths. And the 100 is going to be for the 100%. So here's a bar model right here. So 100% is the same as 1 right here. Okay, so this is going to be our fraction. So when we cut it up into four equal pieces right here, this is one-fourth, this would be two-fourths, this would be three-fourths. And I only uh, listed one-fourth because it's asking for one-fourth. All right, so one-fourth of 100 is 25, so one-fourth of 100% is 25%. So that's what goes right there. Okay, and it told us to shade that, so here is shaded 25%. 25% is equivalent to 1 fourth right there. Because percent is per 100, this is 25 over 100, which is the same as 1 fourth. 
Okay, let's do the same, uh, uh, make a bar model for the equivalent percent of one third. So we're going to draw, uh, draw a bar model and divide it into thirds this time. Okay, so there's a bar model. So this is 100%. So here's 0%, and then so here's one third. So right here, one third of, of 100. Well, 3 goes into 133 times which is 99, 3 times 33 is 99, and there's one left over, so it's 33 and one-third. I didn't divide that, but that's how you get it. So one-third of 100% is 33 and a third percent, and there it is shaded right there. So one-third is equivalent to 33, and don't forget the one-third percent right there. Okay, all right. Uh, so Mary says she can find the percent equivalent of three-fourths by multiplying the percent equivalent of one-fourth by three. How can we use a percent bar to model and support Mary's claim? All right, well, okay, right here, if we just shade three of these right here, three of the one-fourth sections right there, and that shows three-fourths right there, and since one-fourth is 25%, then three-fourths is just going to be three times 25% or 75%. I should have wrote that down right there, 75%. Okay, so three-fourths is equivalent to 75% right there. All right, so we can use a certain benchmark uh, percents to write other percents to estimate fractions. So Here's a number line right here that's cut up into tenths, one-tenth, two-tenth, three-tenth, four-tenth, there's five-tenths, which is uh, one-half, six-tenths, seven-tenths, eight-tenths, and then look, three-fourths is right in between seven-tenths, which is 70%, and eight-tenths, which is 80%, so right between 70% and 80%. Is 75%. So three fourths is equal to 75%. 90 or one nine or nine tenths, and here's 10 tenths right here. Okay, and then so one tenth is the same as 10%. Here's 20%, 30%, uh, 40%, 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100%. Okay, these are our benchmarks we're going to use. So find an equivalent percent for three tenths. Okay, so let's write three tenths as a multiple of a benchmark fraction. Okay, well remember. 3 tenths is the same as um, 3 times 1 tenth right there, and 1 tenth is our benchmark, and then so uh, find an equivalent percent for 1 tenth, okay, so we're going to use that number line that we had to find the equivalent percent for 1 tenth, here it is right here, 1 tenth is equal to 10 percent, so we're left with um, um, uh, 3 times uh, uh, 1 tenth, which is 3 times 10 percent, so it's it's 30 percent right there, okay? And think of this, this is the same as if I multiplied this by 10 over 10, this would be 30 over 100, which is 30 percent, okay? But they asked us to um, uh, uh, use the benchmarks and use our number line to do that. So anyway, let's do that again here. So 76 percent of the class eats breakfast before school. I hope you guys eat something before school. It sure makes your day go a lot better. Even a, a piece of, of toast or anything, you guys, to eat before school. Don't go to school on an empty stomach because you just don't think as well when you're in school. So I try to uh, eat something before school, whether it's a piece of fruit or or a piece of toast or something. Anyways, so about what fraction of the students does this represent? So what fraction does, uh, and it says about, the key word is about right here. So let's go to our number line here. So 76%, okay, 76% is a little bit more than 75%, and the fraction that represents 75% is this 3 fourths right here. Okay, and so, um, so it's going to ask us uh, uh, about what fraction it is. So find the fraction that's equivalent to 75%, which is 3 fourths. So about 3 fourths of the students eat breakfast before school. In fact, it's a, we can even say uh, get a little bit better and say a little bit more than 3 fourths of the students eat breakfast before school. Okay, we use benchmarks to find equivalent uh, percents for each fraction. Okay, so 9 tenths. Okay, so 9 tenths is the same as 9 times 1 tenth, and since 1 tenth equals 10 percent, then 9 times 10 uh, percent is 90 percent. Okay, now 2 fifths, you guys, the benchmark we're going to use is this 1 tenth, so we're going to change 2 fifths to 4 tenths by multiplying it by 2 over 2, which is 4 times 1 tenth, which is 4 times 10 percent, or 40 percent right there. See how we use that benchmark? Now there's another one here. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh yeah, about 64% or 64% of the math class of Mrs. Peralta's uh, class are girls. About what fraction of the class are girls? Again, the key word is about what fraction. Okay, so here's um 60% right here, uh, which would be um, uh, six tenths right there. 
but 64 is a little bit closer to this fraction right here, so I'm going to say the fraction is going to be about two-thirds right there. Okay, all right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.